Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel for the next installment in our new figure showcase series, where I take a quick look at the latest figure I'm adding into the collection. Today's episode shouldn't be too long, but it's one I'm actually pretty excited for. So we'll be looking at the Gravel from Infamous Toys, which is basically Korg based on his appearance in Thor Love and Thunder. And actually the reason I'm pretty excited is I started to feel like this figure would never see the light of day. It was put up for pre-order about two, maybe a little over two years ago, and it just kept getting delayed. But it's finally out, and I will give credit to William Wang, who sells figures on Facebook, and showed that it was finally releasing. And he also dropped a little tidbit about this one, that according to him, this figure is only, um, there were only about 100 to 150 units total. So it's a very small batch. Now look, I know the general feel for Thor Love and Thunder is that the movie dropped the ball. And, and I would tend to agree with everyone on that, especially as a follow-up to Ragnarok and then the Infinity War and Endgame story arc that was set up for Thor. Having said that though, I didn't think that this was the most atrocious movie in the series. It's not the best, but also not the worst. But look, Korg made his first appearance in Ragnarok voiced by director Taika Waititi as one of the gladiators who ends up befriending Thor. And I think he quickly became one of those charming background, secondary, or even tertiary characters. And for me, as a heavy Marvel collector, I jumped on the chance to get a Korg in the collection. And look, I do recognize that this is kind of a deep cut. Um, even Hot Toys wouldn't have necessarily jumped this far into the line, but I'm glad someone made it. And again, this is really the highlight of what third party can do, helping to fill in those gaps in the collection. So look, let's take a look at what we're getting here from Infamous Toys. And as you can see, besides the pretty imposing figure itself, which, because he's pretty tall, there isn't much here. You're not getting a base at all, and that does worry me a little bit, and I'll get into that in um, towards the end, but you are getting a few spare hands, his mallet or bat, and an alternate sculpt. This being third party, I didn't expect much beyond that, to be honest. Infamous has done the Black Order in the past, including the massive Cull Obsidian, and he basically included just hands and a weapon, so the package we're getting here from Infamous is pretty much in line with that. So let's jump into the, the accessories and we're going to start as we always do with the hands. Now this is a little unique in the sense that they're stone and very custom as opposed to your standard human hands. They're pretty nicely done as well with some great detail work uh, creating the lines of the rock interacting with all of them having um, kind of these grooves and indentations. Now they're all four digits as, as is appropriate for the character. As far as poses, nothing crazy. You do have some fists with the figure already installed, a gripping hand, some open palm relax hands, and then a proposed, um, sorry, a posed piece uh, hand. Paint apps are really nice as well with this, not looking like bare plastic. There's just a lot of color variation, and, and it's a great detail job overall that creates that roughened surface. Next up, you get the bat or I think it's almost like a mace that he uses. It's nice, it has some decent paint apps as well with the bronzed out weathered bar and the metallic pieces on the top and bottom. The thing is decently sized as well and the only issue I have in mind is that the cap piece is a little skewed. Not the end of the world either, but a decent job, especially again for third party. So now let's jump into the first of the two sculpts and you'll notice that the second smiling face is fairly similar. So look, it's based on a computer generated image, so I'm not surprised the likeness is pretty decent on these. Now the face does seem a little compressed. I think in the movie it is a little wider, but again, details are pretty phenomenally done here. The eyes look good, but the highlight again is just that detail work, creating all the little crevices and notches on the sculpt with the jagged rocky edges. And Pain App is also pretty decent. I do think that in the movie he almost had a slight bluish tint to him, which we're not seeing here, but it's a nice gray and it looks like stone, so solid effort. Now the second sculpt is a smiling face, which again has a ton of the same details and great paintwork we saw in the previous sculpt, only that you get a chance to see some exposed stone teeth. Now it's another solid effort that does capture some of the features of a smiling face, which is a great touch with the slightly raised cheeks as well. So it's definitely a solid alternate. Only issue I had with mine for swapping the heads, the peg that connects to the neck was pretty stuck onto the sculpt, so I had to work to remove it so I could use the alternate sculpt, which was a bit annoying. Now, as far as the figure itself, look, a few immediate standouts. First is scale. He's a much taller figure, around 15 inches. And while he's bulky, he's not massive like the Hulk or the Cull Obsidian we got from Infamous. Now, I do think Infamous did a great job recreating the look from the movie with the fur over his shoulders and around the bottom of his legs, as well as the extremely colorful pants. 
And, and I mean, they honestly did a great job, especially, again, the theme of this is it's a really solid job, especially when you consider this is a third party figure. But the highlight has to be, honestly, the body and the rest of the figure, creating that really nice recreation of the character with the stone detailing and, and just a solid paint apps overall. The other nice thing is that while the figure has exposed joints because of the stone patterns and detail work, they're pretty nicely hidden. And the other nice detail work includes the leather, the leather like straps around his chest that grip his belt and that have the ram gold um, detail on the front. And it's also nicely recreated overall. And as a big positive, all this is actually hard plastic, so there's no risk of deterioration over the time. And, and it just, again, looks really solid. Major negative for me that I'm having with this figure are the feet. So we've seen, seen this kind of detail before on bigger figures, and Hot Toys did this with Moon Knight. But there's actually a peg that the foot slides into. Frankly, it's a little weird because the peg kind of just holds the foot in place by friction. Um, but if you pick up the, the figure, the foot tends to just fall off. So it just feels a little loose. And, and part of the concern I have with the overall stability of the figure is that it won't be able to stand in, in a pose. So it really did need a base or something. So I'll have to see. Uh, because the ankles do feel a little unsturdy to me. Again, not that you're going to have Korg in the most dynamic of poses, but it just feels like something for me to keep an eye on. Now, the rest of the figure actually has some decent posability. Arms have a nice bend on them, no double jointed elbows, but pretty decent, and the legs have some nice um, uh, articulation to them. Again, nothing earth shattering, but it's something that I honestly have come to expect with larger releases. Like what we saw, again, I'm going to keep on bringing up Cole Obsidian and that big third party lizard we got from, I think it was Pre um, Premier Toys. So, overall thoughts figure was a long time coming. There were massive delays with it, and something that I was concerned would end up getting canceled. So, to have him in hand finally, I. I I'm extremely happy with how he turned out. I think it's a really solid third party release. I would actually say it's just a pretty solid figure overall. It's definitely not the best figure I own, but I think it's better than I thought it would have turned out. And a definitely a decent companion piece that's gonna fit in nicely with the Hot Toys line. And again, it just really starts to grow that Thor Love and Thunder line of figures we're getting, which is pretty, much in my mind becoming a decent one one that probably again is better than the movie deserved but we're ending up with a bunch of characters we haven't gotten before we now have korg we've gotten a hot toys valkyrie a gore the god butcher and a mighty thor jane foster incoming so it's a line that's given us four new characters actually maybe three right because um thunder toys did do a version of valkyrie but again we've gotten three new marvel characters and, and that's pretty awesome for me and korg just a really great addition to the line for a background character that i think a lot of people really liked so look just a few quick thoughts on this one pretty excited to have him i think he turned out great um but let me know your thoughts on this and the line and as always thanks for spending a little time with me and if you are enjoying the content please consider dropping a like comment or subscribing and we'll touch base on the next video